Uh, good afternoon, my name is Maher Lewis and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, four topics. So let me go in here and just go ahead and say um, I'm just going to open up a new, a new AutoCAD drawing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert some DMs. Now, these are DMs that I've just downloaded off the, uh, the USPS website. Uh, and I would go ahead and go ahead and say insert. Uh, I've got various DMs. Now, you know, you can insert DMs one at a time, or you can actually insert them by highlighting multiple DMs at the same time. So let me just go ahead and insert my uh, first DM. Let's go ahead and insert a DM called uh, uh, Cupertino.dem. Uh, what comes up is is something called a color map. We've got to actually tell the system, you know, how we want to colorize or view that DEM. And there are various ways that you can do it. Uh, you can uh, you can colorize it using palettes. You can define your own color scheme to say, you know, I want you know all the elevations between 200 and 400 to be in blue, etc. And keep in mind the DEMs, even though we consider them raster data. If you were to open this DM file in a text editor, you would see that it's just a series of numbers, and it actually records the elevation at a particular pixel. So in this case, I can go ahead and use the standard, uh, uh, the standard uh, color map, but you know I want to be a little more creative here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say let's create a new color map. Now let's call this, uh, you know, Cupertino. And what I'm now going to do, as you can see here, this DEM has uh, a minimum value of 17 and a maximum value of 887. So by default, what the system does is it tries to break it up into 255 equal segments. And you can see, you know, the equal segments will each have an elevation range of 3.418. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on import. And I've got various palettes. So, you know, in a palette you can you can have two colors, you can have five colors, you can have sixteen colors. Uh, and we've got some predefined palettes already in place, and I'm going to select the USGS national map. And as you can see, we've got twenty two colors. So what this will do is it will break up that elevation range from seventeen to eight hundred and eighty seven into twenty two equal elevation uh, bands, so to speak. And it'll assign each color to um, each of those each of those 22 bands. When I open this up, you can see how it populates the uh, the table on the right, and you can see I've got 22 22 elevation bands, each band you know having a range spread of 39.5 uh, meters in this particular case. Now, to make this more effective, I can also add hill shade. I can exaggerate the data. But let's take a look at what this will look like if I didn't put any kind of hill shading on it. So if I go ahead and I say OK to this, and say, hit on Next, let's go hit Next, Finish, it's a graphic extent. You can see what I've actually done. I've taken that DM file, all right, and I've applied a palette to it, and told it to colorize it you know, using different colors based on its elevation. Uh, but it's not very impressive because I mean it's a flat it's a flat image. Uh, what I can now do is on, in the taskbar I can go to images and I can actually open up. You can see there's an entry for Cupertino, and I can edit that color map, which I call Cupertino. I can edit it, and this time let's apply a hill shade and say, well, you know, exaggerate the verticals about five times, and also let's do a uh, a color blend, so that you know one color kind of blends into the other, you know, as it moves from one elevation range to the other. And let's go ahead and click on OK here, apply that, and now you get a much better representation. At least you can start to see, uh, you know, where the hills are, you know, where the plains are, etc. Uh, I can go ahead uh, and and do the same thing for three other, um, you know, DEM files. So let me just go ahead and click on OK here. So this is Cupertino. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert. Now, rather than inserting them all at once, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, you know, three different DEMs, adjacent DEMs, right? Because typically when you 
when you get DMs of North America, um, you know, from the USGS site, it's not going to be one. Sometimes you may get one very large DM, but most frequently, you know, they will be tiled up or broken up into tiles. I can go ahead and click on all three or 50 or 60, depending on how many they are, and go ahead and say OK over here. Oops, one second. I've got to turn off this little toggle here because that's only to be used when we're using multispectral data. I say OK there. And what we will do here, it will go ahead and insert all the the, the selected DEM, but it will default to the standard color color map, which, uh, which was really a grayscale color map. So you can see over here, uh, and I've got three other DEMs that were inserted at the same time, but it, it kind of defaults to the, the standard uh, color map and not the Cupertino color map that I created for the first DEM. So in this particular case, what a user will have to do is actually go in and say, all right, you know, I need to edit the color map uh, for La Honda, which is, uh, uh, I think it's the, uh, uh, the third one up here. But you know, I don't have to go through that, that elaborate process again. I can just go ahead and select Cupertino, apply that, Let's quickly do that for, for all of them here. Obviously, a nice enhancement to have in place was to have the system, you know, uh, or tell the system to use either the standard or a, 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 a pre-built color map when inserting them, you know, as a group. Uh, but currently, this is how you're going to have to do it. So I'll go ahead and say apply there. And I'll go ahead and on the last one, Dingo Hill, I'll also go ahead and say apply Cupertino. All right. So I've got, you know, four different uh, DEMs that I've created. Uh, one nice thing that I can do here is I can go ahead and merge these, these four DEMs into a single image. Because as you can see now, we've got four separate images. Uh, and the command there, uh, or the functionality there would be, you know, let's go ahead and use uh, uh, merge images and say, okay, select the source images. I'll say, okay, let's go one, two, three, four. And then it says, okay, what's your destination image? Well, let's say that I want the, the resulting image to be called cupertino.dem. I'll say, I'll select the image that I want it to be the, uh, the destination. And then I can also go in and just erase all those other three images once that merging process is complete. I can go ahead and say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and detach uh, San Gregorio, La Honda, and Mendingo, Mendingo Hill. And what actually happened now is that I have one DEM uh, called Cupertino.DEM. And now I can actually go back to my Cupertino, and I can change my color map in any form or fashion. So I can go up here and say, edit color map and import, you know, let's import another, uh, you, know, you know, another palette, so to speak, and I can go ahead and apply that. So if I say apply, you can see how that whole representation changes based on, uh, based on the palette that I've selected. Now, some other things that you can do once you've got it into this, this particular stage is let me go ahead and just, uh, select the uh, USGS national map again. Let's go ahead and apply that. I can do things like, you know, uh, 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 you know, flood analysis, for example, you know, uh, just to see, for example, you know, if the, the level of, uh, of the sea were to rise by 10 feet. Uh, you know what in uh, you know what portions of the inland would be affected by it. You know, so I can actually go into a situation and say, let's edit this color map, and I can go in and say, all right, I want a custom, uh, and I can go in and say, all right, so let me go in and add another row below this row and say, all right, at elevation zero, right, elevation zero, let's change this color to blue, 
And so let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Okay. So that's what my elevation zero would look like. Okay. So this is, you know, this is, uh, uh, I'm, I'm putting a, representing any area that has an elevation of zero in a color of blue. Now I can actually go up here and I can do things like, okay, if this were to go up to 10, all right, if, you know, the sea level has risen 10 meters, for example, what are the areas that would be impacted? It's really the type of things that I can do here. So as soon as I click on apply now, uh, you should see that blue. 